a series of videos on the fundamentals of pharmacokinetics. You will find these videos useful by themselves, but they are nevertheless best viewed alongside a textbook, Clinical Pharmacokinetics from the Beginning. It's available on Amazon and priced for a student budget. The textbook and these videos are themed around an imaginary drug called Pretendolone. Drug concentration time data are used to build a pharmacokinetic profile. If you want more information on how this works, see video 1 and introduction. Video 8b, the second video on designing repeat dose regimens, here we are going to look at oral administration. Before we get going, a disclaimer. I am not a pharmacist, I am not a physician. These videos are a general explanation on how to design repeat dose regimens. They are in no way advice in respect to any particular drug. In the previous videos, we calculated a series of pharmacokinetic parameters for single dose administrations of pretendolone. We are now going to use those pharmacokinetic parameters in the design of repeat dose regimens. In the previous video, video 8a, certain terminology was explained. The concentration at steady state, or the steady state concentration, CSS, the minimum toxic concentration, or MTC, the minimum effective concentration, or MEC, the therapeutic window, and the maintenance dose rate, MDR. If you're not familiar with these terms, go back to video 8a and just refresh your memory. We can put some values on here for pretendolone. The steady state concentration is 50 nanograms per mil. The MTC is 150 nanograms per mil. The MEC is 10 nanograms per mil. Having clarified these terms, we can now look at the design of repeat dose oral administrations. Here is the plasma drug concentration time plot and I've put onto that plot the steady state concentration of 50 nanograms per mil. We saw in the previous video, 8a, that if we administer the drug by continuous intravenous infusion, we can hold the steady state concentration steady over very long periods of time. The situation with oral administration is different because we're not giving the drug at a steady rate. We are administering the drug as repeat doses over certain periods of time. That means that when the dose is given, the drug is absorbed from the GI tract until it reaches some maximum concentration. And then the concentration will fall away as the drug is eliminated until the next dose is administered and then the cycle will repeat. So with continuous oral administration, we end up with this cycle of rising and falling drug concentration. Consequently, the drug will reach some maximum concentration that's called the C-max at steady state, and it will reach some minimum concentration called the C-min at steady state. Just to so I don't get too tongue-tied, I'm going to call the C-max at steady state just C-max, and the C-min at steady state C-min. So if I use those terms in the video, you know where they've come from. We also have to consider the MTC and the MEC, because the C-max should not exceed the MTC, and the C-min should not go below the MEC. So given this, how do we design a repeat dose regimen? Firstly, in a similar manner 
to the intravenous infusion, it will take a certain time for the drug concentration to build up to the steady state concentration. And we need to know how long that is, or perhaps more importantly, how many doses does it take in order to reach the steady state concentration. We then need to know what mass of drug is given in each dose. And we need to know how often we're going to give that dose. That is known as the dosing interval depicted by tau. So for pretendolone, we have to select the mass of drug for each dose. We have to select how often the drug is given. We need to do this to achieve a steady state concentration of 50 nanograms per mil, but we have to keep the C-max and the C-min within the therapeutic window. Now that's quite a lot of conditions, so where do we start? Let's begin by calculating the maintenance dose rate, MDR, for the oral administration. Now you will remember that for the intravenous dose, the MDR was calculated from the steady state concentration multiplied by clearance. And our MDR for the intravenous was 1.1 milligrams per hour. So by administering an MDR of 1.1 milligrams per hour as a continuous intravenous infusion, we could achieve a steady state concentration of 50 nanograms per mil. Calculating the MDR for the oral dose is similar. In fact, we use the same equation with just one addition, and that is the absolute oral bioavailability, F. You will remember from video five that F is the fraction of the orally administered drug to reach the plasma. With the intravenous dose, all the drug goes into the plasma. With the oral dose, only some fraction, F, reaches the plasma. So therefore, we have included F into the equation to, if you like, compensate for the fact that it's an oral dose. For pretend alone, we know that our desired steady state concentration is 50 nanograms per mil. The clearance is 22 litres an hour, and F is 0 0.35. So if you put those numbers into the MDR for the oral dose, you end up with 3.14 milligrams per hour. Now here I need to clarify something. The MDR for the oral dose is really a sort of theoretical value because you're going to get this constant cycling of the drug concentration. But the MDR for the oral dose is calculated as if it was continuously infused. So if you like, it is a theoretical value. You can't give the oral dose continuously. So it's the, or it is the theoretical value as if you could. Just to keep things clear, I have therefore called the MDR for the intravenous dose MDRIV and the MDR for the oral dose MDR oral. You may not see those subscripts in the literature. So when you see MDR in the literature, just be clear as to whether you're dealing with intravenous or an oral dose. So we've calculated the MDR for the oral dose as 3.14 milligrams per hour. Let's now turn to the dosing interval, or tau. How do we set that? Well, probably a good place to start is to simply set it to the half-life. Got to start somewhere, so let's use the half-life as our starting point. Having said that, we're going to come back and revisit that in a little while. Okay, so we have an MDR of 3.14 milligrams per hour. And if we administer the dose every 5.7 hours, 
then each dose will contain 18 milligrams. That 18 milligrams is known as the maintenance dose or DM. Now this is easily confused because the DM, the maintenance dose, is a mass of drug. It is not the dose rate. So the maintenance dose and the maintenance dose rate are two very different things. So what we're hoping to achieve here is to give 18 milligrams of the drug every 5.7 hours. We know that it should achieve a steady state concentration of 50 nanograms per mil, but there will be variation in that concentration defined by the Cmax and the Cmin. And we need to know whether the Cmax and the Cmin are within the therapeutic window. Now we can calculate that using these equations. Just a, a point about these equations. They do assume that the pharmacokinetics of each of the repeat doses that's given is the same as that for single doses. That may not necessarily always be true. It's probably a reasonable assumption in many cases. Since we are dealing with the basics here, it is an assumption that we're going to make in this video. For pretend alone, we know that the oral bioavailability, absolute oral bioavailability F is 0.35. The volume of distribution is 180 litres. The elimination rate constant is 0 0.122. The Maintenance dose is 18 milligrams and tau, that is our dosing interval, we set to the half-life of 5.7 hours. So we can pop those numbers into those equations and we'll get a C max of 69 nanograms per mil and a C min of 34 nanograms per mil. The steady state concentration is the mean of those two numbers. And that comes out at 52 nanograms per mil. Remember that there will be a time that it takes to reach that steady state. And it's the same as with the intravenous dose. The steady state concentration is reached after five half-lives. That's 28 and a half hours. So let's summarise where we are currently. We are going to have a maintenance dose of 18 milligrams. That dose is going to be given every 5.7 hours. That should achieve a steady state concentration of 52 nanograms per mil, which is close enough to our target of 50. The C max is going to be 69 nanograms per mil. The C min will be 34 nanograms per mil, but we are still well within our therapeutic window. The C max does not exceed the MTC. The C min does not go below the MEC. We can also say that the steady state concentration will be reached after five doses. A dose of 18 milligrams of pretendolone every 5.7 hours seems to work in respect to the pharmacokinetics, but it is not a convenient dosing regimen. If you were prescribed a drug and told to take it every 5.7 hours, I suspect your reply would be rather curt. So we need to change the dosing interval. We do have a reasonable margin here within the therapeutic window. So instead of 5.7 hours, let's try 8 hours. 8 hours is actually quite a, a common uh, dosing period. It's the equivalent of 3 doses a day, morning, noon and night. So we are going to change the pretendolone dosing regimen to take 1 dose every 8 hours. 
the MDR remains the same. It's 3.14 milligrams per hour. Tau, the dosing period, is now eight hours. And so the maintenance dose is now 25 milligrams. If we now amend our equations with those new values, then the C max is 78 nanograms per mil, and the C min is 29 nanograms per mil. The steady state concentration, of course, is the average of those two numbers, meaning it is 54 nanograms per mil. So let's just summarize where we are. Our maintenance dose is 25 milligrams. That will be taken every eight hours. The expected steady state concentration is 54 nanograms per mil, which is still close enough to our desired 50. The C max will be 78 nanograms per mil. The C min will be 29 nanograms per mil, but those are well within the therapeutic window. The C max does not exceed the MTC. The C min does not go below the MEC. The steady state concentration will be reached after five half lives, which is 28 and a half hours for pretend alone with its half-life of 5.7 hours. Now the dosing interval is eight hours, so we can say that the steady state concentration will be reached after three to four doses. So that means if the first dose is taken on the morning of day one, we can expect the steady state concentration to be achieved either on the morning or maybe noon of the following day, which is perfectly acceptable for an oral dose regimen. So it appears therefore that pretendolone could be prescribed as a 25 milligram capsule every eight hours. There are, however, a whole range of other considerations here that normally would have to be brought into account. They are for example, the effect of missing a dose, the effect of double dosing in error. There are a whole range of considerations that go on when you design a repeat dose regimen. We're not going to cover them here in this video, but more information is given in the textbook. There is a, there is a general discussion about some of these other factors. And also, there are some general guidelines for designing some repeat oral administration regimens. This is the last video on the pharmacokinetics of our imaginary drug, Pretendolone. This channel does have some supplementary videos that you may wish to look at. Pharmacogenomics, the pharmacokinetic drug-drug interactions, drug metabolizing enzymes and membrane transporters, and passive diffusion around log P and log D. These are longer videos, but if you want information on those subjects, I would recommend that that's where you go. So, from the authors of the Clinical Pharmacokinetics from the Beginning, which is available from Amazon, and it's been priced for a student budget. That's Dr. Graham Lappin and Dr. Mark Seymour. We do hope that you have found these videos and our textbook useful and instructive. And whichever direction your career now takes, we wish you all the best. Goodbye.